Welcome to another edition of the U.S. Office of Special Counsel's video series on the Hatch Act. If you are just joining us, please be sure to visit our website at www.osc.gov to see the full series of videos. In this video, we will explain the Hatch Act's application to employees who work in state or local executive branch agencies. First, we'll discuss how the Hatch Act applies and what it prohibits. Then, we will use a real-life example to demonstrate the Act's application to a state or local employee. Generally, the Hatch Act applies to state or local government employees who work in connection with federally funded programs. But whether any individual employee is subject to the Hatch Act is very fact-specific. And, as we will discuss, the Hatch Act's candidacy prohibition applies only to those employees whose salaries are entirely federally funded. There are three prohibitions that could apply to state or local government employees. They are, first, using one's official authority or influence for the purpose of interfering with or affecting the result of an election. Second, directly or indirectly coercing, attempting to coerce, commanding or advising an employee to pay, lend, or contribute anything of value to a political party, committee, organization, agency, or person for political purposes. And third, being a candidate for public office in a partisan election. The first two prohibitions apply to state or local executive branch employees who have duties in connection with activities that are funded by a federal loan or grant. An employee can have job duties in connection with federally funded programs or activities in a variety of ways. Some examples include, but are not limited to, having administrative responsibility for federal grants, working on federally funded programs, or supervising employees who have any of these types of responsibilities. Examples of activities that violate these two prohibitions include using your official title or position while engaging in political activity, directing other employees to volunteer for a political campaign or give a campaign contribution, and asking subordinate employees to engage in political activity in support of or opposition to a candidate for partisan political office. The last prohibition applies only to employees whose salaries are entirely federally funded. If a state or local executive branch employee's salary is 100% federally funded, then the Hatch Act prohibits that employee from being a candidate for public office in a partisan election. Now, an election is partisan if any candidate is to be nominated or elected as representing a political party, for example, the Democratic or the Republican Party. However, if an election is nonpartisan, meaning that none of the candidates are running with political party affiliation, then the Hatch Act does not prohibit covered employees from running in that election. And certain employees are exempt from this prohibition given the political nature of their jobs. So, for example, governors, mayors, and other elected officials, such as sheriffs, are exempt from the Hatch Act's candidacy prohibition, even if their salaries are entirely federally funded. Before we move on to a real-life example, it is important to note that there is one category of state and local government employees which is entirely exempt from the Hatch Act, employees who work for educational or research institutions. For example, if an individual works for a state university or local public school system, the employee is not subject to the Hatch Act even if he has duties in connection with federally funded activity or his salary is 100% federally funded. Our office receives questions from state and local employees who are interested in running for elective office. Many of these questions come from law enforcement officers. Although the Hatch Act applies more broadly to many positions in state and local government, we will use a law enforcement scenario to demonstrate how the Hatch Act applies and what it does and does not prohibit. In this example, let us assume that we've received a question from a local police captain who is interested in running for sheriff. The first thing to consider is whether the election at issue is partisan meaning that candidates are running with political party affiliation. If it is not, then the Hatch Act will not place any restrictions on the captain's activity, regardless of whether she is covered by the act. But if the election for sheriff is partisan, we will need to consider whether the captain's salary is 100% federally funded. If it is, then the Hatch Act prohibits her from running in that election. In this scenario, the captain's salary is funded solely by local government funds, and thus the Hatch Act does not prohibit her from running. Once we have established that the Hatch Act does not prohibit the captain from running in the partisan election, we need to consider whether the captain is subject to the Act's two other prohibitions. That means we will need to determine if she has duties in connection with federally funded activities. 
In this scenario, the department where the captain works receives a federal grant to fund overtime pay for officers working on specific patrols. Our captain is responsible for scheduling those overtime shifts and reporting back to the federal grantor the number of overtime hours each officer works. Therefore, she has duties in connection with the federally funded overtime patrol program. Because the captain has duties in connection with federally funded activities, she is subject to the Hatch Act's prohibitions against using her official authority or influence to affect the result of an election and coercing or commanding another employee to engage in political activity. Which means that, although the Hatch Act does not prohibit her from running for sheriff, it does restrict some of her campaign activity. Here are examples of activities that violate these prohibitions, including one's official title in campaign materials campaigning while wearing an official uniform, using pictures of oneself wearing an official uniform for campaign purposes, using official resources like an agency's social media account or website to advance one's candidacy, requesting, encouraging, suggesting, or implying that subordinate employees assist campaign efforts. So in this scenario, while the captain may refer to her official title as part of her biography, resume, or qualifications for the office she is seeking, she may not use her title while signing campaign communications and solicitations, or identifying herself on campaign signs or other campaign materials. In addition, she may not use or wear her uniform to campaign, including at campaign events or in campaign advertisements, web pages, signs, or literature. Lastly, because the captain is a supervisor, she is prohibited from asking subordinate employees to volunteer for or contribute to her campaign or ask that they vote for her. Now let me give you one example of a case involving a state or local employee who does not work in law enforcement. In this case, the employee works for a county social services program and is responsible for making determinations about the receipt of such benefits. This employee would violate the Hatch Act by asking those applying for or receiving those benefits to contribute to a political party, attend a campaign fundraiser, or vote for a candidate. This concludes our video on the Hatch Act's application to state and local employees. If you have any questions about the Hatch Act, please contact the U.S. Office of Special Counsel's Hatch Act Unit at 800-854-2824 or hatchact.osc.gov.